Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT Sly Tying Friday. Tonight, 16 June 2023, we're working on our Branson boxes. That probably has about half of you scratching your head and wondering what the heck's going on. The weekly tip, we're going to talk about the bag. Oh, we'll find out what all that is. But for right now, we're the BDs from Boise, Idaho. And we're starting a new venture this evening, filling our Branson boxes. And what does that mean? We're going to Branson, Missouri for a fly tying rendezvous of all of the best and important fly tires <laughs> of the world meeting there in September. Fred Dupre is going to tell us a little bit about that. And let me spotlight Fred so he can explain to you just exactly what we're what we're doing there. There you go, Fred. Well, thank you. Uh, we're having a, uh, a get together of the fly tying group. And the, the way this came about is that uh, annually we would at the annual meeting, the fly tying group would have a barbecue uh, one afternoon and we would uh, uh, swap flies and we would uh, have raffles and and have good barbecue and, and it would last for about a, an afternoon. But since COVID, we haven't had anything. And uh, so we decided that we would have a get together. We called it a rendezvous. And we're having it in, uh, our first one in Branson, Missouri. Uh, Branson is southern central Missouri. The closest uh, airport to Branson is Springfield, Missouri. Um, and it's about 40 minutes from uh, Springfield down to Branson. Uh, the, one of the reasons we picked Branson is uh, it's uh, the Lions Club has offered us their facility at a very reasonable price. And uh, also um, it uh, is a wonderful town. It's a, it's a family town, um, a lot of shows, a lot of activities, and also great uh, fishing, brown trout and rainbow. Um, and they call it Lake Tenicomo, but it's actually the White River. Um, we're uh, planning on having uh, about 100 tires. And we're going to have, it's going to be on, we start out on September the 14th. That's a Thursday. And Thursday evening, uh, or afternoon, evening, we're going to have a tires party. And in that party is where we're going to um, swap fly boxes and the way that works is everybody gets a uh, a number and we'll start at number one and number one goes up to the table and picks out a box of flies where everybody puts their flies on the table uh what you don't want to do is get picked last so uh <laughs> uh we we might we might have a consolation prize for last um, but anyway, we, we're, we're going to have hamburgers, hot dogs on uh, Thursday, on uh, Friday, starting out uh, at, I think, 8 o'clock in the morning. We uh, will be tying, and all the way till 5, uh, the Lions Club will be serving lunch. Um, and then uh, that evening, we're going to have a, a banquet, um, and it's going to be a buffet, and the Lions Club uh, ladies are also going to provide that meal and uh, for a nominal fee. And then the next day, all day is uh, tying. Oh, I forgot. On Friday evening, if you are so inclined and like good country and Western music, uh, you can come join us uh, to at the uh, Texas Tenors concert uh, at 7 o'clock at night. It's a great show. And again, all, all day Saturday is tying and we are gonna knock off at around five o'clock. Lots of uh, raffles, lots of auctions. Uh, the public is invited and um, it should be a great event. The reason uh, Al and Gretchen are tying fly boxes, you need to bring two fly boxes with you, one to swap on Thursday and one to donate for auctions. Um, Jack, did I miss anything? No, Fred, I think that covered almost everything. Uh, I think it's nine to nine to five. You have to, in order, I think we sent out invitations definitely to everybody here on this site, mm -hmm. but we've sent out invitations to large groups of people. If you have not received an invitation, uh, please send me an email at 
F-L-Y-T-Y-E-R-F-R-E-D at gmail.com. Flytirefred at gmail.com. And I will send you an invitation. You have to belong to Fly Fishers International as well as the Fly Time Group. Okay, well, I've, I've added Jack Gillis to the uh, to the spotlight. He is the current president of the Fly Tying Group. And if he has any words of wisdom or encouragement, please do so. Well, we invite everyone. I mean, you don't have to. It's not an invitational. Uh, you don't have to have any certain uh, qualifications. Just bring mm -hmm. your advice and your materials and come out and tie with us. Uh, the auctions were have everything from a, a custom made J vice to materials to uh, uh, flies tied by some of the best tires uh, around. In fact, uh, we'll have a Jock Scott that's going to be given away, uh, which is being tied by Kyle Hand. So come join us. It's going to be a, a great event, and we look forward to doing this every year. Well, I might add, we're going to have uh, 10 vendors. We're limited the number of vendors to 10. And they come from, they have all types of items to uh, sell. Okay, and that was uh, September 14 through 16, is that correct? That is correct. All right, well, I'll start removing spotlights and we'll get ready now. What we would like to do, even this evening, if any of you are set up to tie, let me know and I will spotlight you. We can spotlight up to nine people at a time. This is a tying and this is a tying and lying session, grabbing a, a terminology from Gary Bagley. I was just on one of his groups, so, and he calls it a tie and lie. And most of what they said was true, though, so it was not too much lying going on. Anyway, we'll get this. Anybody have any questions about the rendezvous? This would be a good time to ask them. I have a question. Uh, we didn't talk about how they can can sign up for for the like the the, the banquets and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, the invitation that we sent out it's actually a uh, a website online sign up, and uh, on that website you can sign up for you know what days you want to tie, times you want to tie. Um, whether or not you want to uh, attend the Thursday night uh, uh, fly tires party, whether or not you want to go to the the, uh, the banquet or buffet on uh, Friday, and also the Texas Tenors concert. We also at the at that site we have um, uh, shirts and hats for this event, and they're great shirts and great hats, and you can. Uh, uh, order your shirt and hat, and we will uh, put your name on it. And uh, and the uh, they are very reasonable. Uh, that's it. So okay, it's an online registration. Yeah, you can go to sign up. It's FTG Fly Time Group, FTGRendezvous.com. Wonderful. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, uh, Fred. And just we might add, we already have our banquet tickets, our car rental. Airplane tickets, whatever else, other tickets we can get. Did we got. We get tickets for the concert. I don't think so. We need to talk about that. Well, okay, that's, <laughs> we haven't spent enough money yet, so it's time to get to spend some more. Anyway, tonight, if there anybody, please, if anybody wants to join us, we would love to have you do so. What we're going to do tonight, a little different. We'll be tying side by side like we often do, but um, we will. Each introduce our fly, and uh, Gretchen will be tying on at her station, and I'll be at mine. And just like you see there, of course, if anybody wants to join us, you'll be there as well. We'll be doing these uh, not on a scheduled basis, but throughout the summer uh, as we continue to fill our fly boxes. And when we close out this evening, we're going to talk about the auction raffle. And you can see behind us uh, what looks like an American flag hanging there. That actually is a shopping bag. It has our website on it. It's going to have goodies in it, and we're going to add goodies every week as we go along. There's some stuff in it right now. We're going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to wait till the end of the gig to find out or watch the recording tomorrow on Facebook. But anyway, are you ready to start with your pattern? Yep. Okay, <laughs> let, me, let me switch you over here, Gretch. 
this is definitely not a new pattern. Uh, I've tied this before for y'all, but uh, I just kind of like tying it. So I thought maybe uh, I would do that for the boxes. It's definitely a Western dry fly pattern. So uh, here's where we're going. It's a lime trude. And I'm contemplating, maybe I'll do some in uh, red too. I haven't decided for sure. <clears throat> um, I'm going to do size 10, 12, 14, and 16. And there'll be a dozen in the box. So I guess I could get started. One of the things I've started doing more and more and more is using this stretchy nylon stuff for my uh, floss. So when I do that, I usually start it out as my tying thread also. I'm gonna put my glasses down so I can see. So I'll talk you through this. So when I start out, I'm gonna kind of divide this thing into third, one third, two thirds. So that is my marking point. <clears throat> so I'm going to come back here just to the bend and come forward and um, whoops I don't want calf tail I want I have a big chunk here of moose and that's what I'm using for the tail so I'll get a chunk of that I have a tendency to overdress my flies so I'm going to try to be a little sparser tonight. I don't know why I do that. I guess I think more is better. So I cleaned it out. I got a nice starting here of a tail. We've got a question from Paul in Australia wanting to know how many flies in a box. And the truth of the matter is it will vary based on whatever the fly, the individual fly tire wants to do. We decided 18, not 12, yeah, didn't we? A dozen and a half for, is what will be. A dozen and a half is what we're going to have in our boxes. And we've ordered the boxes online today. So we got the fly boxes all ordered. You might think with the 50,000 boxes we got around here, we could come up with four that are the same thing. Ain't no way in heck. <laughs> okay. So we had to had to buy some boxes. So the, the tailing tail, tail is this shank length. And I'm going to cut this at a nice angle here. And copper wire. And for ribbing. And one of the things I've discovered is watching other people. I'm getting much better at my ribbing than I was before we started doing Zoom. So I lay my wire on the off side to me. And that the let the I let the thread torque, pull it to the bottom. There we go. There's the body. Now I'm going to come down here and uh, get my black thread. Tie off the lime. Trim it. And I'm going to counter wrap this. So I come over the top first. And I don't worry about having, you know, the exact number on, on dry flies. I'm not tying Atlantic salmon dress fly, but I'm going to have about three or four here on the back part of the body. Now I'm going to wrap my thread around this twice. And that's going to keep it tight when I bring it around. You know how sometimes when you tie off your wire, it loosens the wire here. If you wrap your thread around that a couple of times, that doesn't happen. By the way, that's a tip sent to us from Robert Newman in Spokane, Washington. Yeah, that's something <clears throat> new, and I love it. It's a really good thing. Okay, the, the next part of this fly is peacock, and that's probably one reason I like to tie it, is I love peacock. Peacock, I've got, the rachis is just a little heavy along here, and 
it was it wasn't looking good so i'm going to get rid of a good portion of this so it's a little lighter because i want the rachis to the back so i'm going to tie it on and then i'm just going to use a little thread here to kind of even some things out and Were you going to wrap that wire before you put the peacock on? The wire's already wrapped. Oh, I'm sorry. It sure <laughs> were, were, were you asleep over there? I was. I should have been. Shouldn't have been petting the dog. I should have been watching what you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't get it real even. I was too busy talking, but that's okay. It'll fish. Okay, the next thing is I found today, I was looking in our calf tail box. And I found a great calf tail. Look at that. Straight, so that's what I'm using. <clears throat> I'm going to keep that calf tail right over here in my tying station so Al can't get his hands on it. Oh, dear. <laughs> Okay, I cleaned it out. And remember when you're tying, oops, there's one broken one. When you're tying with calf tail, the secret is, is to get rid of all of that stuff and just keep the first and second layer. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to work with it. So let's stack this now. Looks pretty good. And I want that about to the half of the tail. I'm holding it slightly, but you probably can't see it on this. But you I'm, can. You can see it tilted to the other side. I'm tilting it and slightly above the shank. And then I'm kind of doing a finger thumb tuck, just a gentle wrap, and then pull it down. And I've got it attached there. I want to cut this at an angle. So I'm kind of holding that at about a 45 and then cutting it. And that gives me a nice beveled edge to prepare for my, my hackle. See where this, this little bump is just before it goes up? That I, We call that the... What do we call that? The heel? Anyway, the pull point. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Yeah. I'm going to wrap it around from each direction so that it is even. Yep. Now that allows me to get that wing laying at kind of an angle there. And I've totally messed up my, what I did wrong on my ribbing. One of the things I've noticed too with this fly, it looks a lot better if I use two hackles rather than one. So I'm using this fairly long one as my first hackle. And then I'm going to pick up one of my shorter ones over here. I'm just going to check this one to make sure it isn't too big. Oh, it's perfect. And one is a little darker than the other, and I kind of like to do that because it gives a nice blended look. And I will tie them on at the same time. And I hold them at about a 45. And be sure always to leave a little bare stem so the first few wraps will lay right for you. I'm going to leave my thread hanging right there because this first one, that's about as far as I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to space it, knowing that I'm going to come through with my second hackle. Turn that off and now 
what was it waggle is that what david said he's gonna waggle it through uh, i always said huh? wiggling her way through well there's, there's a friend of ours that was teaching a clinic uh, um the other evening and anyway taught referred to that as waggling and i like that better yeah, than, i thought that was kind of kind of a fun term a descriptive isn't it yeah i'm gonna pull the hackle back i didn't like that last turn let's do that last turn over Sometimes the last turn is really good if I. Sometimes the last turn is one turn, turn too many. Yeah, no, nah, I just needed to dress the fibers back a bit so they lay just like I want them to. There we go. Two wraps. Pull it back. Force it to the butt end back into the tackle. Trim it off. And now I'm going to do a good whip finish. Meaning I start back by the hackle and wrap towards the eye. And I will put just a little bit of Thin glue, thin head cement on it right there. And that's my fly. All right. Well, over at my workstation, this is the bubble done. We introduced it to you here several weeks ago. It's a fly that I've been fishing for the last several years in place of a comparadun. And uh, the reason that I like it is because you can see it has a little bit of a shoulder, if you will, up at the front where the comparadun is narrow in front of the wing. Or it's only as thick as the, the amount of dubbing you put. Well, with this one, it's a pretty slender bug. And uh, this is one that I tied uh, this afternoon without dubbing on the back of the, of the body and only dubbing at the front. And then I do it where it's dubbing all the way through. Now, tonight, I'll dub all the way through. But it's just options that you can do with the uh, overall design. Let me start by placing the hook in the vise. I'm doing a size 12. It's one of the ones that we're going to send to Branson. One of the things about this fly that still drives me crazy, and I've been tying it for, oh, several years. I can't say a lot, but maybe five, six years, is um, you have to crowd the eye. Drives me nuts. I mean, my whole life I've been trying to keep from crowding the eye, and this one you start right at the eye. I mean, is that crowding the eye or what? Anyway, so let me wrap back here just a little distance, and I'll get ready to tie on my tail. We've got um, some uh, hackle fibers for the tail. It's just a cocktail yarn. As you can see, there's a there's a recipe. Nothing, no big uh, surprises there. Uh, the rib has optional wire or thread. And it can be a body, can be floss or dubbing. The wing is deer and the head is a bubble hair, a head. Anyway, uh, I'll pull a couple of these fibers out here. And no, I'm not going to be dividing the tails. Personally, I think on the water, it makes absolutely zero difference. But I'm sure there's people out there that divide their tails all the time and say it makes all the difference in the world. The truth of the matter is, whatever works for you, works for you. And that's that, that's great. Now I got the, the tail in place. Now I'm going to wrap forward right back to the eye again. And in fact, I am going to place a half hitch right there at the eye so I don't slip away from it. Right there. Okay, good. I'm going to slip over here to my materials and get a bundle of deer hair. Just about like the same amount of deer hair as you would for a compare done. And I'm going to stop at the waist bin on the way back to the vise and clean out the trash. So all I have left is the hair that I want to stack and put on as a wing. Boy, static electricity is bad right now. I forgot to bad. I forgot to spray right now with uh, 
static guard. So I'm going to take a pause for the cause here, folks, and get the static guard out. And uh, see if I can get this hair to quit sticking to me. Either that or I could just take and transport this whole Zoom studio down, down to Jack and Fred's area and, and be in 100% uh, humidity and I wouldn't have this problem. Okay, we'll see if that doesn't help out a little bit. Okay. Now we're back at the vice, stacking my hair. And I'm going to measure it for length, and I like the bundle of hair to be as long as the complete hook. That includes the bend and maybe even a little bit of extra. And I'm going to tie that on, and it still, it pains me like crazy to tie any material that close to the hook eye. But you'll see why here in a minute. I'm just kind of getting it bound, bound into place with really tight anchor wraps. Now I'll just trim away the waist. Add a couple that got away from me. And I'll just wrap back over those trimmed ends. Kind of cover them up just a little bit. And get my dubbing wax out. And uh, why the wax? Don't want to get too much there on the on the thread. Put the cap back on my wax so it doesn't end up in the trash with the cap off. And I'll um, just touch dub some uh, this muskrat dubbing to the hook or to the thread. Keep it sparse. Starting right here at the head. Filling that in. Making sure that I get it all covered all as I go towards the back. Like I'm going to run out of dubbing. I need to get just a little bit more. That's real muskrat, huh? That's real muskrat, yeah. You've got that hidden in your drawer over there, don't you? Yeah, I didn't didn't want you to know about that. <laughs> she manufactures this dubbing that's like muskrat, and that's fine. But um, it uh, well, it's not muskrat. <laughs> Careful. All right. Now, what I want you to notice is that I'm running out of dubbing as I hit the back of the fly. And that's by design because my rib is now going to be, as I go forward, I'm just going to make the rib out of thread. Now, it don't show up much here, but in the water, it gives nice segmentation until I reach the head area. Now, I'm going to remember when you go to pull hair up, and pull it back. You can't pull it tight enough. You have to push it tight. So I kind of get it pulled back, and then I come in here with my thumb and push so I can get that nice and tight. Kind of rounds it too, doesn't rounds it? Rounds it, lines up the fibers. Pull it tight. Don't let go of the wing, but stand it up. And now I'll just start coming back through that bundle with some turns of thread to keep that wing from falling down like it normally would as a trude style wing, like it would if it was going to be a trude style wing. Now let me go ahead and do a quick whip, whip finish and we'll finish off the wing on that. This is a pretty easy fly to tie. Exactly like a comparison. There's almost nothing to a comparison except some dubbing and some hair and whatever you use for a tail, whether it's a sparkle tail or a, a regular tail. I mean, whatever it's going to be. And see if you can see what I'm doing there. I'll get it twisted so you can see. All I'm doing is making sure that the hair is fanned out evenly all the way across. Take my scissor points, make sure it's good. All right, and I'll get my glue. And I like to place a drop of glue right there on, on the head at the junction point between the thread collar there and the wing. And what that does is uh, 
provide just a little bit of extra support to that wing there as that, as that dries. And what you did have then is a bubble gun. Don't look like much, but boy, it fishes really great as a mayfly imitation. And now, back to just us. What we're going to do now is do a side-by-side -side presentation. Everybody talk, ask questions, make well, I suggestions. I got a question. I want to know what Fred and Dutch and those guys are going to tie for their flies. Do they know, yes, you know we, what you're putting in your box? Yes, talk to us. How about you, you know, Dutch? I, let me, let me uh, kind of go over the ones I'm tying. I'm, I'm going to tie the ones for fishing there, uh, Lake Tenicomo or the White River. And um, and I'm going to tie some small scud and sow bug patterns, size 14 and smaller, all the way down to 20. Um, and um, those are uh, gray and olive colored. Uh, copper bodied flies uh, like brassies or copper johns uh, in smaller sizes, uh, ultra wire midge nymphs, soft tackle flies are great, uh, but tie them size 16 and, and smaller. Um, those are some of the flies that I'll have in my box. Wow, sounds great. And the fish there. Dutch? Well, um, I also will have uh, some scud, and I like little trichos uh, on tailwaters like this, uh, like the RS2, especially for my bottom fly. And then I will use something like this. Let me uh, let me spotlight you, Dutch. I can't see it, but we're going to spotlight you so we can see that. Let's see, add spotlight. There we go. Oh, Jesus. You're plum serious here, Dutch. Well, <laughs> um, on your right, uh, I really like the woven hair hackles. Uh, so on the right, there'll be sandy mites and then the fizzle. Uh, oh. This one back, this one up here is, uh, it's called the black creeper. That's a George Grant fly. And then moving to your left, the Brim Reaper on top. Uh, mm -hmm. Below that is the Purple Haze. I like that as a, it was, uh, I like that as a dry. Next to that is the Picket Pin. Above that is the Shaky Bealy. Uh, next to the Shaky Bealy is one that I, I tied. I, it's, I call it the Stone Grant. And it's actually, well, I have this pattern that I like to tie and use in Montana a lot. And it's a, uh, I call it the stone hopper. It's a stone fly pattern with legs and so forth, but it's, it's wide instead of stacked foam. And I call that the stone hopper. So I tie that same pattern using woven hair hackle. Oh. And I, oh, I call cool. that the stone grant, uh, whether the, if it's elk, Main like this one, and the wing is also elk mane. Also use uh, moose mane on that fly. Uh, next to that is um, the stone hopper, and uh, this one down here is a favorite. It's uh, actually a Ray Bergman fly, and he calls it the Moisca M O I S K M O I S C A. Uh, he was fishing on the Moisa River in uh, Canada, and it kind of looks like a bumblebee pattern. Oh, but like he that. starts it with, and you can see on the tail there, it's a golden pheasant tail. And uh, if you don't have golden pheasant tail, when this fly gets wet, that golden pheasant tail straightens out. Uh, so you could actually use uh, four or six ha hairs of, from a, like a hackle of some kind, yellow hackle. Uh, I use um, Berlin wool or a sculpin wool for the body, yellow and black, and then a hackle in front of that, uh, a guinea hackle on top of that. And it's he, Ray Bergman, we all know him for his trout flies, but there was a period in his life when he was tying a lot of bass flies. 
And he claimed this one, the Moiska, to be his favorite bass fly. And it's it's one of my favorites. It's a very effective fly, lots of movement. And then uh, uh, well, that bass, was that a small mouth or a large mouth? It it really doesn't matter, uh, Gretchen, uh, small or large, and also any any anything in the sunfish family uh is uh attracted to that and I've caught trout on it as well. Wow. But how do you around spell here, it? large mouth bass, pardon me? How do you spell it? M O I S C A. Uh, it, it's difficult to find a lot of information on it. Uh, it took a long time to get information, but uh, Ray Bergman went to um, uh, Canada in northern Ontario and he fished the Moisa, M O I S A, river, which is a wild river in northern Ontario. And uh, this fly that he replicated was actually designed and and fished in 1947, but it's a, it's got a lot of movement, and I think it, it's a lot like a a, a bumblebee imitation. And uh, then above that, I've got this fly that I call this one the Royal Grant, and as you can see, it's got uh, the the body like on a royal coachman with the red floss and so forth. But I put a woven hair hackle on this one as well. Oh my gosh. And uh, it, it's, it's really effective. A lot of really good movement. And I've mentioned before about these woven hair hackles. The beauty of that is when that hackle gets wet, when it goes in the water, the, the hackle barbs stay uh, out like this. They don't collapse around the uh, body of the fly like natural feathers will. And then this one, uh, believe it or not, the name of this fly uh, <laughs> is called the Muda Puda. And it's a sorry. It's a, <laughs> it's a crazy name, I know, and I could tell you the story about it, but um it's a fly that John Van Roof. Uh it's actually if I can get it set up here for you, it's on a uh clink hammer hook. <clears throat> So you can see that it, it the hook is it, it starts off with like an egg sack at the bottom, at down at the bend, and then dubbing in the body, a sure. wing, and a foam hackle, and then a cider on top. But the Muda Puda is a very uh, effective fly, lots of movement, and that's what I look for more than anything is movement on my flies. Now, don't anyone get the impression he's excited about this show? <laughs> now I'm going to call on Barry Webster and Jack Gillis. So Barry, you, uh, I'm going to add you to the spotlight and then I'm going to go find you now, Jack, and add you to the spotlight as well, because these are kind of the movers and shakers uh, along with, I'll get Fred Dupre up here too, added spotlight and Fred Dupre. I'm going to have you all here because you're kind of the movers and shakers of this whole thing. And if I missed anybody, it isn't by, by design is just holler and let me know and I'll get you spotlighted here as well. But Barry, what's your plan for the flies you're going to do? So I, you know, I tied earlier for you the um, uh, uh, one with the legs. Um, the Helgramite? The Helgramite pattern. <clears throat> so I'll probably do some Helgramite patterns. And that, you know, it's hard for me to put a fly box together and not populate it with some casual dresses. I'll be looking forward to seeing them both in person. Jack Gillis, what are you going to be doing? Uh, for the first night, I haven't decided for the second night yet, but for the first night, I'm going to be doing a series of the professors in the original style with the, the lower, I don't know if I can see it that well on this camera, but on the lower wing with the wing lowered. And I'll be doing them in blue and yellow, the two colors that are predominantly for wet flies. All right, awesome. Well, we're gonna go back to tie in side by side unless somebody has got more to add here. Any, and we Anybody else wanna talk about what flies you're gonna tie and bring? I'm going to tie uh, hill country flies, and uh, they're basically warm water flies. So, and fill my box with those. 
And by Somewhere. the way, the if, if you're planning on fishing Branson, that is a tailwater fishery, and they do um, release water from that dam. There is a a horn, you can hear it. And uh, when you hear the horn, get out immediately. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> and uh, we don't want you floating down the river. And uh, so uh, uh, make sure you uh, you know bring a waiting staff. It's a little slippery, and uh, obey the horn. So we know it well. <laughs> I made Al nervous when we were fishing on the white. I was out too far yeah, <laughs> and yeah. bobbing around. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go back to tying a, a fly. Chat as you wish, folks, and please just join in. I was going to mention for folks that haven't been to Branson and fish the Tani Como. Uh, the Tani Como is really the White River between Table Rock and uh, this Bull Shoals, and it is very weightable uh, depending on the number of generators that they're running. So if they're running one or zero generators, uh, it's easily weightable and fishable there. And by the way, Tanny Como stands for uh, Tanny County, Missouri. So Tanny Co-mo. Well, that's that's good to know. I had no idea that it, it stood for anything. It's like uh, up on the Canadian border be, between Idaho, Montana, and Canada, there's, there's a lake called Kukanusa. Well, it's that for the Kootenai River, the USA, and Canada. And you put them all together, and it becomes Kukanusa. <laughs> anyway, I don't know where that came from, but it, anyhow. Weird names, weird yeah. names. The weird names you end up with when you have a, a, a peop, group of people sitting at a conference room table deciding uh, how they're going to incorporate everybody into a name. So tell me, uh, Fred, a little bit about this country and Western, you call it the Texas, Texas what? The Texas Tenors. Yeah. Uh, they're a group that uh, uh, was on the Amer America's Got Talent show years oh. years ago, uh -huh. at least 10 years ago. And I think they almost won, but I think they came in second place or whatever. And uh, three guys, they're tenors. Uh, they're all from Texas. Um, they have a show. They've been all over the world. Um, they have a... a, a they basically sing uh, a combination, believe it or not, country and Western and classical music. Oh, my gosh. That's uh, a wild combination. It is. Uh, when I say classical, and I'm talking about uh, uh, some of its opera. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Really? Wow. Yeah. And, so uh, I don't suppose we're going to get any boot scoot and boogie. Well, they have that, too. <laughs> Well, that's my favorite. Uh, but song. It's a good, good group. Uh, my wife, Linda, and I have been following them for the last, oh, eight years. We actually belong to their fan club, Texas wow. Tenors Fan Club. It's called Tenorettes. So, <laughs> anyway. So this is going to be cool for you then, huh? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, I haven't been to a live show in a long time, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. Well, the, tic the tickets we got from them are uh, heavily discounted. They're 50% off. So, Wow. Well, wow. Is that because you're members of the fan club or it just uh, a 50%? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. All right. Uh, that and a group rate as well. So, Well, I'm looking forward to that. The closer it gets, the more, more enthusiastic I get. It was, you know, getting the tickets and getting everything arranged last week kind of got me, got me in the mood for going. We kind of had some issues about the dog and who was going to take care of the dog and how is that all going to work out? And, right. And the garden and I and all. We were thinking about driving and going to 
Texas and we realized how long we'd be gone. And so we kind of have finally gotten yeah. our act together. Our so last trip to Oregon uh, was enough for us to realize that uh, age has caught up with us and things we could do even three, four years ago are not quite as easy as they used to be. We're even going to get a riding lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that I'd ever settle for that, but as it turns out, that's starting to sound like a really good idea. Yeah, we're going to have to go, come to Texas at another time. I know my sister would, and our hey, hey, daughter. Al. Al. Yeah. Uh, when you're ribbing that going forward, yeah. You, have you ever just used a black marker and, and colored your thread and made a black rib? I, I have not, but that's a damn good idea. You want a, a marker? I've got. I got one, one right here. here. I got one right here. Let okay, me back up. Let that. me back up and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. There we are. <clears throat> I use that technique a lot lately. That way, you don't have to have a a metal rib. Let's see if that's going to be enough to get the job done. Let me see what that looks like. Oh, look at that. Jesus. Fred, would you do me a favor? Send me an email with that in it, and I'll see if I can't get it in Fly Tire Magazine. Okay. That is such a great idea. Jesus. Look at that on the screen. That's just too damn easy. <laughs> just too easy. <laughs> I love that. This is what we need to do is have people tie and have other people give you suggestions as you tie. That's a really good thing to do. I like that. Don't forget to send that to me because I'm not joking about that. I'm always looking for tips for fly tire. In fact, I'm finishing up um, the next 10 right now. And uh, so it won't be in the next one, but it somewhere along the line, as long as they keep keep requesting them and they seem to find uh, them of value so those were always great articles Al and Gretchen well that's basically all we do is put together what you send us well the pictures are important and it was kind of interesting the first couple of them he did for this one the pictures were a little difficult to hold and Take the picture and get everything lined up. I was it's trying kind to of do it by myself because Gretchen was tied up on some other stuff. And sometimes when you need four hands, that just I've got about a, I've got some contraptions out there at my photography workstation where I can put the uh, uh, rest my hand on some things. I got a couple of uh, little miniature cranes that'll hold materials <laughs> in place in another way, but. After after a while, it just gets to be pretty much too much to. A lot easier when I can say, Gretchen, wouldn't you come here and focus this darn camera and push the shutter button? And that works really well. So do are there guides at a fly shop with guides in Branson? Uh, yes, uh, there's two fly shops um, in Branson. One of them is going to be one of the vendors at the show. And uh, by the way, you're just uh, Springfield is the headquarters of Bass Pro Shop. They have a huge Ooh. store there. They also have a uh, on the riverfront in Branson, they have um, a lot of, it's a beautiful riverfront, a lot of stores and shopping malls and restaurants and uh, boat rides. And uh, it's just really neat place. My uh, family's from, from Missouri and I had a cousin who was married. Do you, are you familiar with Tom Jennings who developed the compound bow? Bass Pro Shop made me think of it. He he always worked with Bass Pro Shop there. And I don't know if it was in Branson, but they lived on the other side of the lake there somewhere. 
Camden? We went, or, we went to visit him one time. Was right. it Camden or something I like don't know, that? Something like that. It, I can't remember, but yeah. Anyway, it's uh, anybody that shoots a compound bow. Tom Jennings, uh, her, well, her aunt was married to him. Cousin. Cousin. Oh, that's right. Anyway, was married to him, and it was uh, quite a fellow. It's uh, it's interesting how his life paralleled a lot of the things. You know, if you go to an archery show or a hunting show, it's not too different from a fly fishing show. It's a, it's the um, same environment we're all going to be in, just a, a different pursuit. Yep, those folks are all gone now, unfortunately. Yeah, my mother was born in Missouri. <laughs> you can tell her she's, that she's at a least spoke to a native because she calls it Missouri, not Missouri. Not I got I got corrected as soon as we got married. <laughs> it's not Missouri. No. Well, now, don't everybody all speak at once now? Jeez, you know, it's uh, us tying flies can't be so doggone interesting. It's got you all, got your attentions all just thoroughly grabbed. It's, um, it isn't like you've not seen any of this before. You know, it's 6.54. I'm wondering if it's time for the bag. It is about time for the bag. Let me finish uh, this fly that I'm working on, and we'll, I'll go get the bag, and we'll start talking about that. Hey, yes. Al, you know, somebody earlier asked a question about how many flies in the box for the swap meets. And after doing uh, multiple of the FFI expos and the fly, train, fly tying group swaps, I learned that if you can't tie well, you should try to baffle them with your volume. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, Barry, I would expect your, your box to only have two or three flies in it. No, mine will be full. <laughs> as Fred, as Fred said earlier, you don't want to be the last ones. And it, the the way that the thing works is, we draw a number. The first person gets to go, and they select somebody's flies off of there. Well, whoever's flies that they pick, that person gets to go next. And so it's a progressive deal, and you really don't want to be the last guy up there with your box standing that somebody gets forced into taking your box. <laughs> I, I, again, we're going to have a, a prize for that person <laughs> to ease the pain. <laughs> well, we ought to donate a box just for that, Rich. <laughs> yeah. Fred, is it going to be a nice surprise for them or a uh, kind of rub the salt in the wound? No, no. We need to have a nice one, Jack. Beginning flight sign book? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> a beginner. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, Al, what's your, what's your email address so I can send this to you? It's, uh, let me go back here for a second. Right there at the top right hand side. Okay, hold on. Thank you. So this is Jeff from the Long Beach Casting Club and I had a humorous thing happen last night was at the club, uh, we were teaching the Project Healing Waters guys how to do uh, soft hackles. And uh, whoever was supposed to bring the material forgot to bring some, uh, some dubbing. And so right next to our club is a uh, dog park. Oh, no, really? Oh, I got, <laughs> oh my God. So... While he was showing the uh, the little video 
to the vets of what the the the, the fly they were going to tie. I just walked over to the uh, dog park and looked for the two of the fuzziest, furriest dogs and found their owners and said, "Hey, what, can I can I get a handful of your hair there?" And <laughs> oh God, I can't believe it. <laughs> came back oh, to the Jesus. club and had just enough hair there for the guys to to dub a little ball on their fly, you know, to 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 puff out the soft hackle. So it worked great. <laughs> that is. Um... Now that's called ingenuity and making do with what you got. That must be the same group that we tied for that time. Yeah, I would suspect so. That's yeah. a lot of years ago. We went and tied for the Long Beach Healing Waters guys. That was a great group. We took our son, who was a a vet, and and he kind of kind of enjoyed that too. As a consequence, he ended up taking a bunch of vets out on his. What's what's the occasion when they go in the Los Angeles Harbor and they go around and I don't know beats the heck out of me. It's something to do though with the boat right around the harbor. Yeah, and he took the a bunch of the vets around the harbor. Oh, cool, nice. Yeah. Actually, this is a new group. We've got we've got two groups going now. There's a group on a group of vets on Mondays, and that's during the day from nine to eleven, and then the group we have on Thursday evenings they can't make it during the day so we we do another one for the guys on Thursday evenings and that was the group wow. last night that was a great group of guys well and gals too you had a there were a couple of gals there of course uh -huh. Carol was there too we really enjoyed it and our intention is to go back again sometime whenever we're in California but we haven't been there for a while with COVID, we kind of quit going, and now our sons decided to go back to school to get a master's in organic chemistry, of all things, and so they're kind of busy, so we haven't uh, been there. Okay, the bag. Let me go get the and bag. And this reminds me, you know, this is, a, we can promote some other things for the auction, too, if you guys want to, but that's what the bag is all about. Let me take my... Uh mic off for just a minute. Well, Gretchen came up with this bag. Obviously, it's the flag and it's got our web address, uh, our business and web address uh, at the bottom. And over the next weeks, we're going to be putting stuff in here. And Gretz, you want to start? Well, the first thing is we're going to put in one of our dubbing kits. And it's <clears> going to have a super tacky and a tacky wax. And we've got uh, 12 packages of dubbing, three of the touch of Tahan, three of the double magic, and three of the, or four, I'm sorry, of each of the soft touch. So that's the first thing that I put in the bag. And we'll be adding to that over the over the next week. I've uh, I've added an item here. It's a it's a piece of history. Mm -hmm. I got this from Henry Hoffman when he was still growing the birds. Wow. And that's so that's um a number three hen cape and saddle in the same packet. The last year that Tom Whiting did Hoffman before he changed the name to Whiting. Uh, that's one of the one, one of the last ones he produced. So it's two for one. Henry Hoffman, Tom Whiting. And for those of you that didn't know, when Henry sold the company to Tom, um, there was a period of time when Tom had to keep uh, the Hoffman name. And at the end of that time, then he elected to change the name to Whiting fighting hackle instead of Hoffman. But anyway, this was the last year that this was That's produced the last year that that was uh, still had the Hoffman name. I'm sorry, somebody said something. Anyway, those are the two items that are in there now. And we're not done yet. I mean, just looking around the room, there's there's stuff all <laughs> over the place here. Anyhow, let's get to, get to the point here of I'll un remove our spotlight so that we can all talk and uh, 
I'll put Dutch on the spot. What are you going to put in the auction, Dutch? <laughs> and he just, he's sitting there with his mouth open. Oh my God. <laughs> You come on the uh, well, as a matter of fact, um, I've talked with Jack about this. I've already got a, a pile started in my house here of uh, some fly tying materials, but also some fly fishing gear, uh, some really nice uh, bags and packs and things like that. Uh, so there'll be more than fly tying, but a, a, an abundance of that. Also, um, Occasionally, I'll get a call from somebody locally who passed that was a fly tire, and their family asks me to come and look at their stuff and so forth. So I've accumulated some materials that I'm going to include as well. So there'll be uh, pr quite a bit. Hey, Jack, what about you? I've donated a custom-made j vice from South Africa. That's incredible. Oh, my God. Oh, whoa. Whoa. We've been... We've been letting our mouth water over that. Oh, boy. We'll have to do that. We'll have to take a close look at that one. And uh, Barry? Yeah, I've got some um, uh, sling packs and things like that that I'll probably uh, bundle up for the auction. <clears throat> and I know Fred is probably just going to give somebody a, a pair of tickets to Texas Tenors, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, well, I'm, you... no uh, I'm... I'm sort of, I'm having a physical problem of standing up for long periods of time. So I'm kind of giving up standing in a river anymore. And uh, so I'm going to be unloading some of my fly rods and reels, et cetera. So uh, I'm going to be mostly a tire from this point on. So That's why we're looking at some lake fishing. And it's going to have to be an awful darn nice bank on the lake. Because right. um, the wade in the river just don't. Isn't in the cards like it used to be. Our nope. favorite river, the Lockstraw, has these great big boulders that you have to go over to get down to the river, and that's just a thing of the past. Right. Anyhow. But we can find other places to fish. Let's see. We've got. Anybody else got anything they want to donate? Well, I've got a Trout Unlimited uh, sling pack I can throw in there. Perfect. Fine with me. Absolutely. Jim, you were uh first and you were holding up a fly earlier. Where is Jim? I'm right there. Oh, there he is. For me. Let me spotlight uh, the, the fly here for a second. See what we got going. Whoops. Whoops. Did the did the wrong. Oh, there he is. Okay, gotcha. Ah. What is that thing, Jim? It, it, it's big and it looks like a steelhead. It's a great it's a fly. Atlantic salmon. Uh, pattern. <clears throat> Francis Francis, uh, an Irish book. There's there's a Kelson version that has different body colors, and then this is the uh, Francis uh, version, and it's got uh, two colors of seal, and the tail is a golden pheasant breast feather, and then uh, the hackle, which is this real light stuff here <clears throat> is <laughs> it's I was digging through my eagle replacement substitutes and I came across this package that said golden eagle which is what the pattern called for from Scotland and I think I got it it's about probably about six years ago at, at an international show from somebody who had materials. And then the, uh, it's got what's called the, the D-wing, where they're, they're mounted flat. And those, that's a slate, uh, supposed to be kind of a silver gray mm -hmm. feather for the, uh, the wings. And they're tied on flat and as a result when that is in the water those two things go like that got it <clears throat> and then uh it's got teal for the throat and it almost looks more like gadwell 
but I, I took it off of <clears throat> right wing teal. I had the bird, so I know it's actual uh, teal for the for the throat. And it's tied on an Alec Jackson hook. His uh, one of his extra long, and then it's uh, shank, and then it's got the uh, all the it's got the loop up here for the you know for the yeah. what is that uh, silk it, uh, not silk but um, gut gut this gut. Gut. That, yeah gut. Okay, I see that Fred has indicated here that if you have auction and raffle donations, you can send them to him at uh, 110 Stetson Trail, Georgetown, Texas. And you can look in you can look at the comments if you uh, if you want to uh, to know the the full address or the one above it is his email address. You can send him an email and. And then chat with what, what you got and what you'd like to send. Because if it takes a semi truck, maybe we need to just send it to Branson. <laughs> now we've also got uh, Fred Haney donated the three honeybees he tied that's on the cover of Fly Tire. Oh, oh my oh, God. Oh, How wonderful. Drew, he also drew a limited edition print he's throwing in. Nice. All right. Uh, David Crawford, you haven't chimed in or nothing, but are you going to the Branson show? I guess he's uh, somewhere else at right now. <clears throat> anyway, I should probably shouldn't be pinning people down about something like that. <laughs> we appreciate everything you're doing for us. <laughs> hey, every, everything we can. But anyway, whether we do this next week or not, I don't know. Uh, it's whenever the whenever we get the Zoom bug chewing at our back that we want to want to want to keep at it at least a little bit. I mean, I, I sat down here after a couple of weeks in the garden and doing other stuff. And I said, Jesus, how do I turn this darn thing on? Couldn't remember. I had to, had to drag out the notes and re remind myself just how to do it all. But anyhow. They didn't know what to do with themselves last Friday night. Last Friday night, I looked at the <laughs> ceiling. I said, God, what are we going to do tonight? <laughs> Thanks to you, I'm acquiring lighting equipment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway. But we'll we'll uh, do this as the uh, well every now and then throughout the summer as we fill the boxes and we prepare to fill the bag. And we'll continue to do the garden show. Yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> we're having fun with the garden show. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually get something out of the garden one of these days. We hope. Stay well, we've off been those eating. ladders. Pardon? Stay off those ladders. Yeah. 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 yeah I. Uh, interesting to talk about the ladders i did get on the ladder to finish the greenhouse and then i said well i did that pretty well uh there's some loose shingles on the roof i better go up and take a look damn near fell over and i just squatted right back down scooted up to the edge got on the ladder and got off and called a called a roofer to come and take care of that for me <laughs> and so i won't be doing that kind of stuff anymore very good advice barry thank you yeah, yeah. there I'm just comes a time that. when we have to accept our limitations if somebody said Al, I guess you Al, I guess you're gonna not gonna be climbing any telephone poles, huh? I still got a set of hooks, but but I know hooks you do. And, <laughs> and telephone hooks and and you know I when I looked at that after I just dang near fell off that roof, I said, Well, you know, I could get my old climbing belt out and I could throw a hand line on over and I said, wait a minute, right. this is a good way to die. <laughs> so if I'm gonna die, let's do it doing something that I'd rather be doing than fixing shingles on a roof. He climbed the tree about what? What was that about uh, 12 or 12 years ago or something? Several years ago. It was a, you know, we had a tree that needed a little work, and so he put on his his climbers and climbed the tree and and did the work and he got down and looked at me and he said, That's the last time I'm gonna do that. <laughs> he said, I'm not out, I'm not kind of out of shape. I used to climb 30, 40 telephone poles a day, and now look, just looking at one makes me tired. So <laughs> climbing it, there isn't even a chance. <laughs> so, anyhow, long time ago, nothing to be talking about tonight. But anyway, we're going to wind it up for tonight, folks.